somebody was saying they missed the tools. So here's the mystery tool of the day. I'll bet people know what this is. Somebody does. So anyhow, yeah, typically in the past when silver was down, I'd be in a shop and when it was up, I'd show chickens and it seems like the weather is getting better so maybe I'll do more outside videos. Now, someone, I, I get comments a lot that um, people say, well, the fundamentals haven't changed. So what's going on with silver? Here's my response. The fundamentals have not changed, but perhaps people's interpretation of the fundamentals were not quite consistent with how things work. And I'm the same way. The world is a big, complicated place. The, um, the banking, finance, money, these are many interchangeable parts. And I doubt anybody on the planet knows fully how they all work. So it's a matter of understanding, okay, we have these complex financial systems. If I were to understand how they worked exactly, I would be making millions and millions and billions of dollars at will because I would know where things were headed exactly. And I could use that knowledge to make money out of these markets like, like it was, you know, turning a faucet of water on. But I can't do that. Nobody can do that. There are some people who have had some success, but nobody completely knows how the moving parts all work and what's going to happen. So that's my, my response there, is that the fundamentals haven't changed, but perhaps our understanding of the fundamentals needs to be re-examined. Now, one thing about fundamentals that is kind of a staple in a lot of the alternative media, YouTube, a lot of the, the, um, the bullion channels and so forth, is the properties of money. What are the properties of money? And what happens is we have people who are listing, giving you a definition. The properties of money are this, and I will tell you. Here is my recommended approach. Instead of someone telling you what the properties of money are, research the history of money. What was money? How long it lasted for? And create your own definitions. In the past, I've, I've, I've said that you know some of these definitions of money that some people have given need to be either expanded or modified or whatever because when someone gives you an absolute definition and you can find in history somewhere an example where this absolute definition was violated, then that definition needs adjustment. So the purpose of this video, or the, the, the main part of this video, is about the stones on Yap, the islands of Yap, the yapping dogs, Yap. They're per, it's called Ray, R-A-I, probably saying it wrong. But for hundreds of years, their money were these gigantic stones with a hole in the middle. Right? Giant stone donuts. Well, not really donuts because the hole was small compared to the big thing. But I mentioned this before a few years ago. I'll give you the link. It's fascinating. The people on this island were, had a form of money that was so big, they couldn't carry it, right? And the money, each one was a little bit different. The value of each big stone ray, Rai, I don't know, was different than the other one because it depends on the history. Like, you know, um, this is a, a certain kind of limestone. So in order to get th this money, they had to take a trip to another island and there was danger involved and they had to bring it back. And the more dangerous the journey, the more valuable that stone was, right? And there, there were certain things that involved, for example, it was a limited quantity in the fact that it was very, it was expensive and risky to take this journey. There are other factors involved there. So looking at the stone, the, the, these giant stone money, it's like, wait a second. Maybe some of the defi de definitions of money that I've looked at don't explain this giant stone money. So it means that perhaps trying to fit a definition around what money is, look at all the things that have been money and kind of make your own definition from there. 
this huge, these huge stone things, so fascinating. In fact, the, the people would just put these giant stones in front of their, in front of their huts, right? And uh, when ownership changed hands, sometimes they wouldn't even move the stone. So the stone in front of your hut might not even be yours. But these stones were so heavy, one person couldn't steal one. They had the big hole in the middle because they put a giant log or a stick to the middle, and a whole bunch of people would have to carry, carry this, this giant stone money. And even today, on their license plates, they, 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 they honor these stones. They, they still use this, these stones for things like marriages and whatnot. But the giant stone money market was kind of um, busted, or whatever word you would call it, saturated, um, when the Europeans came over because um, originally they didn't have technology for like iron, right? So they would have to actually use shells to carve this limestone and, and with, 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 um, with iron tools, it was so much easier to, 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 to make these things. And then of course with modern technology, shipping them over, it was a lot cheaper, right? So that, that kind of, so that they had to, to take, they, they had to take measures saying, okay, not just any giant stone, stone disc can be money. Only these are criteria. They added criteria to it, right? But it's amazing because the culture, all those people went along with the money. There is no crisis of confidence until the Europeans came. And even then, they still tried to use it as money, even though in the modern age, it's still used in ceremonies and they still, it's still a big deal for them. That's an amazing thing, right? It kind of shows you about confidence and money, that there's a extreme robust. It's, there's an extreme robust, somehow mysterious strength to it. These are giant stone limestone discs that are money, and the the people there, there was a huge amount of inertia where they didn't want to. They wanted to stay with it. So when we look at our current system, it's kind of amazing how you know we've had these crisis crises, all these other things happening, yet this paper money magically moves on. It's it's. There's, there's a, like a cultural memory, just like there's a cultural memory with gold and silver. That, that, that's a longer cultural memory. We do have a shorter cultural memory for this dollar thing and, the, and whatever. It's like, you know, look at the history of, of, of money, right? When people say, oh, a fiat currency fails every 40 years. Well, these giant stone disks, right? They, they weren't exactly gold and silver and they had value for hundreds of years. Now, I don't know if the, if, if the, the king or whatever said, these shall be money, or the, 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 was it the free market? The free market on these islands adopted them as money, right? It was kind of like giant stone bitcoins, I guess, right? Didn't have computers with the same concept. You'd say, wait, this is crazy. Those are giant stone disks. But the people there adopt them as money for hundreds of years, right? The whole 40 years um, a, 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 quote, fiat currency fails is wrong. Try hundreds of years for a giant stone disc. Okay, so that's the point of this video is that don't let someone else try and give you concrete definitions of, of something, right? They really don't know more than you do. We're all just people and we don't have perfect information, right? We don't know how all the moving parts work. So really, you have to study the history yourself and see, well, what was money in the past? And how robust was it, right? It was amazing how robust this giant stone disk system was on the island of Yap. All right, thanks for watching.